game. And now here's your host, GQ. Thank you for joining us. We have a great show for you today. First of all, if you haven't done it already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Email us at Game Show Chat. I'm sorry. Email us Game Show Chat at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter at Game Show Chat. Now let's get into the topic. We're going to be talking about comic book movie. I'm sorry, comic book games because there's a lot of comic book movies out there right now. So, I mean, this this is the hot thing. So, I mean, comic book games. But here's the problem. There are some really bad ones and there's some really, really good ones. So we're going to talk about what it takes to make a great comic book game. And we, first of all, we got to start off with the bad ones. So Waffles, uh, we're going to bring to the panel Waffles and we're going to bring to the panel Mega Sean. But Waffles, let's just start off. What's some of the bad comic book games out there? The to my recent memory, one of the really worst ones was Aquaman for the GameCube. Like, Aquaman just, for the GameCube. Just abysmal. Like, this, it, the, the, the hook hand Aquaman at that, so it's just... When they, when they try to toughen him up and make him, like, edgy yeah, you know, and hardcore. Hair, you know. or, okay, and gave him the long hair like he wasn't, you know, that same jerk you know, on Super Friends that was wearing that orange scale outfit with the green uh, leotard. Right. So. It's just, ugh. Okay, so, Megan Sean, what you think? I mean, I know you, you know, I'm sure you have some that you just don't like. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, I have a... Uh, comic book fan. Yeah, so I, I'll just go, I have a quick eight, and actually the first one was... Um, Aquaman. Um, for the most part, almost any Superman game has been horrendous. Um, Batman Dark Tomorrow, Catwoman, The Incredible Hulk, The Pantheon Saga, uh, Fantastic Four, Green Lantern, Rise of the Manhunters, and then um, Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects. So these are abysmal games. Okay, so I mean, it seems like it's Marvel and DC have done wrong, it seems like, in this one. There's nobody's safe. Oh, on this one. And just to be fair, let's, let's, let's make sure we uh, eliminate some of the Atari 2600 stuff okay, yeah. and the yeah. NES stuff. Because, I mean, let's be honest, the technology wasn't there. Right. The, that first Superman game for the Atari was just a bunch of blocks flying right. around. Yeah. And then Nintendo was plagued by LJN, who oh, could do nothing right. The when devil. The, LJN had a <laughs> long, long, long list of failures. I mean, just a long list of failures. Yeah. Like, they had the X-Men game was terrible. They did a Spider-Man game was terrible. They tried to do a Wolverine game. It was terrible. Nightmares yeah. nice. Thinking but about I got a gift. You know, I got a gift from Megashawn since oh. he was talking about his love of the Superman games. Oh. We, we, oh, we're going to present to you... Like Kryptonite. Superman 64, <laughs> one of the worst games ever, <laughs> ever made. And, so, here you go. And uh, That's for you. Get that out of here. Listen, All right, I, well, I, I, fair I, enough. I, All right. I think... What makes that, that's not even really a bad comic book game. That is a terrible game. Like, they have you right. flying through rings, and if you don't get through all of them within this minute and 30 seconds, it takes you all the way back. So, super, so what you're trying to say to me is Superman, who can fly at supersonic speed, uh, could probably beat the Flash if need be. And, you know, it's just like, why can't he fly through some rings? I guess because of that kryptonite fog that's limiting some of his powers. Right, that... fine. You know, let's just give it over to Waffles. Uh, what's some of the, just not even just the bad, what's some, what's some of the ones you thought were pretty decent? Uh, I liked Ultimate Spider-Man when that came out for the Xbox and uh, PS2. Now, the thing I liked about that was, is because it was his own story. Like, it was, it was based off the Ultimate Spider-Man comic books, but it, it, it led into some of the books and you know, the artwork was exactly the same as Mark Bagley, so you, it looked like you were reading a comic book during the game. Okay. And that's what I like about when they focus on their own story instead of making it based off a movie. You know, do, when you, you gotta do the movie tie-in to make your money, but I feel when they just do their own story, you have more freedom and more characters to choose from versus a movie where you have an hour and a half or you got a two-hour time limit to tell a story. Because I accidentally beat Spider-Man in the movie, too. I beat it on one day on accident. Wow. Like, so like, I just, just ran I was through just it. And I just beat it. And I was just wow. like, this is it. But like I said, like you have more characters to choose from. You just don't have these with one, two characters that they put in the movie. They might throw an extra one in there, but it only lasts for, you know, one scene or whatever. But Well, that, that brings me to one that I actually, I mean, you'll see what you guys think about it. How about that X-Men Origins Wolverine game? Now, here's oh, the thing. Yeah. The, it, the movie was terrible. It, it, that game was great. Game. The, the game is always bad, and the movie is decent or bad, or they're both bad, but right. the game, it was, that was a real sleeper game. Yeah, it was, it was great. It had the, the violence. It had the right amount of action. It was true to the characters. It wasn't really, it was somewhat based off of the movie, but it was still more towards the uh, source material. So, which I think that was another reason why they were able to succeed in that you guys, game. You guys think that's one of the things that makes a good game for comic books rise? It's like, okay, if you're going to tie in with the movie, 
That's fine. Fill in some of those extra gaps that the movie can't cover. Let's just put right. in some of the side story, backstory. Right, because yeah. the game will be over like that. So. Okay, then, so, all right. Oh, and then another thing, uh, to your Spider-Man point, that Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage, I think, was a classic Spider-Man game. Now, Super Nintendo, right? Yes. Red yeah, card. But, Red yeah, card. Okay, yeah, Red but card. Not, obviously, with today's graphics and the Spider-Mans that have a more open world feel, you know, it wouldn't, you know, match up to it, but it kept to the storyline, it kept to the characters. It was literally right out of the comic books, right into, your, mm -hmm. right into your, um, to your video game screen. So it was a great game. So the presentation on that one was good. I mean, even though, of course, you know, they didn't have the 3D technology right. and all the sort of things, you know, because Spider-Man right. 2, I think that's what made Spider-Man 2 so good on the Xbox and PS2, mm -hmm. was the fact that it was this full open world, almost yep. Grand Theft Auto sort of thing. Because yep. I remember the original Spider-Man for those systems, you couldn't go down the street level. Yeah. Right. If, you, if you swung below, like, the 38th floor <laughs> on a building, you were dead. I mean, just instantly. No, no explanation why. You just couldn't go near street level. But it, they opened it up finally in the second one. Yeah, it had its problems. There was some glitches. Invisible right. buildings. Yeah. You, you would swing on nothing. Right. You know? it's just like, okay. but, but overall, the game was fun. Because I think one of the, the, the highlights of that game for me was like, okay, you can go to street level. Yeah. And you can pick people yeah. up. Yeah. So let me pick up the, the thug that I'm fighting. Right. And let's go up to the top of the Empire State <laughs> Building. And let's do the spinning pile driver move and take him from the top of the Empire State Building all the way down to street level and let him... You know, whatever happens, happens. It's pretty version. devious, man. It's devious, <laughs> it's but it, devious. They, hey, Gra dude, it's Grand Theft Auto with Spider-Man. You're right. So You're right. I get to swing around and do what I want to do. So that, that's all sorts of fun. Let's, let's go back to some of the bad ones, just, just to rub some salt in the wound. Uh, horrible movie, and even worse tie-in, almost unplayable, Catwoman. Oh. Catwoman for, uh, um, let me see what system was that on. This uh, terrible system is what it was for. It was for. probably on the GameCube, just oh. like that Aquaman. Uh, I don't have nothing to say about it besides just puke. It makes me want to vomit even thinking about it. All right. Another movie tie in. Like, it's just every comic book movie doesn't deserve a video game. Not, especially not that one. Exactly. Well, oh. that movie off, right off the bat. So, oh, you know, we got Holly Berry. No, Holly Berry don't jazz everything up. She didn't jazz that up at all. <laughs> so she needs to go back to being Storm. Is that what you would like? Not at all. Oh. I, 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 you see? She, she got to go take care of that, that spy's daughter, child, whoever she's oh, married with now. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, but n no more. All right, now. Let's, let's just hit the elephant in the room. One of the best series right now, best games as far as comic book related, is uh, the Arkham series oh. with Batman. What do you guys think on that? Real quick, because we were kind of running oh. down on time, but what, what makes those so great? Uh, Rocksteady did a phenomenal job. They came up with their own story, as Waffle said, but they kept true to who all the characters were, and then they developed something based off of that. And they exploit his abilities and tools with his bat belt, and you, you, know, you do detective work and all detective that. Detective work? Wow, Batman does that? Well, yes. yeah, according to Christopher Nolan, he doesn't. I mean, you know, you get a, maybe one scene in, in The Dark Knight. But other than that, you get man running around from Bane <laughs> and, and, and trying to fight people. And he does things in the daylight yeah, was... that he's not supposed to be doing. Yeah. But, so, but okay. Yeah. Well. But but hopefully argument. one day we'll get a Superman game like that where they exploit his abilities in a reasonable fashion, well, you know. See, here's the thing on that, and I think that's where the disconnect has always been, is they're like, like you said, Superman is almost godlike. Mm -hmm. So if he can't really be hurt, you gotta find some way to tie in. And of course, Correct. it's usually kryptonite, and that gets old real mm -hmm. quick. I think they should really kind of tie into the fact that he's a solar battery. Like, unless he charges up with the sun, yeah. his heat vision's not as powerful, the freeze breath and all of his strength and all that stuff is just not up to par. He's kind of losing a little bit of it. Yeah. Maybe that, that type of game mechanic. Because the one they did on Superman Returns was garbage. It was like, oh, if the city gets damaged too much, yeah. sure. then, you know, because in other words, Man of Steel is not going to happen as a video game because <laughs> property damage all over the place. But we're almost out of time. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure as always. Again, anybody watching this, make sure you go to gameshowchat at gmail.com and email us your comments. Because if we're wrong, we'd like to hear what you think is a worse comic book movie than some of the things we've mentioned or even a better one. Follow us on Twitter, at gameshowchat, and make sure you subscribe to this channel so any new episode that comes out, you will be aware. So, gentlemen, game over. Holly Bray don't jazz everything up. Ooh.